All right, guys. Well, I want to say hello and welcome to everyone tonight. Um, this is our Thursday night for our singles let talk. And we always like to come in and check in with our singles, see how everything's going with you. And, um, you know, just as a family, just come in to check in with everybody. Uh, we are lifting up uh, Mrs. Tracy Hill on tonight uh, and the loss of her brother on today. Uh, so uh, if y'all would just continue to keep her up in her press, she's going to be listening in online. She won't be chiming in tonight, but I told her this is a great place as a distraction to come in. So she won't be so focused on, you know, everything that's going on around her. So Tracy, we're definitely lifting you up in prayer. Uh, Mr. Joe, how is it going on your end over there? Oh, so far, so good. Um, I don't have any complaints. Just may have a few requests, but no complaints. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Miss, I, I see Mrs. Shelley is joined in with us. Miss Shelley, how's it going on your end over there? How's the weather going? Um, weather's good for now. It was it was uh, lightning and thundering um today. Um, so power has been going in and out, but other than that, it's been going good. Okay, good deal, good deal. And uh, we've got a couple of guests, Miss Felicia Johnson, she's on already. We've got other people that's gonna be joining in a little <clears> bit later. <throat> and uh, hopefully we can have some open dialogue and conversation. And then we've got our host, Mrs. Cheryl Dunlap. I think she's still trying to get her computer logged in and all of that. But while we're waiting, uh, Mr. Joe, if you would help us to open up in prayer on tonight, and then we're going to go in and get ready to jump into, um, you know, tonight, because y'all know the time will run out too fast <laughs> with us. And yes, uh, we uh, probably got a lot to say. So Mr. Joe, you <laughs> open us up in prayer. Oh, I sure will. What, may we bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, we ask that you first and foremost, touch the heart of our sister, Tracy, as she go through a situation, let her know that you're there and that you come into the setting and just hoover over all of us. We understand that life is different. We understand sometimes we don't understand that we understand. But Heavenly Father, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that when we go through, we can squeeze your hand. Your hand, your covering is so much bigger than we are. We understand that the experiences of life are here for us. We don't always understand, we don't always get it right. But for this moment, in this season, in this place, we ask you to come in again, not silent repetitions, but to hoover over us and let us know you're there. So these are another blessed reaction. in our son Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, Joe. Well, thank you so much uh, for opening us up in prayer on tonight. And I love that prayer. You know, sometimes we don't even know what we know, you know, and, um, and, and sometimes it's until we come into the presence of God that we start realizing that once again, God is more than enough. You know, he's more than enough to help us through uh, whatever challenges that we may have going on. And I believe that God allows us to come into these, these classrooms sometimes just to <laughs> distract us, you know, to get our mind off of things for a little yeah, while, yeah, you know, so yeah. we can work out some things behind the scene. Because if y'all anything like me, um, I know in times past, I would have my hands on it and hands on it. And the Lord has asked the question, when are you going to take your hand off of it so I can do something <laughs> with it? I keep hearing your prayers coming out before me, but I also keep seeing your hand touching it also. So, you know, y'all, I was, I was walking around the house the other day and, you know, anytime you start um, something, a new journey in life, um, it's, it's going to feel new, uh, but um uh, uh, the only reason that God gives it to you is because he's already prepared you for whatever it is. But sometimes we don't realize because we're busy calling it new. Oh, this is a new thing. It's a new thing. <laughs> but instead, you know, God has, has already paved the way for us. And so I was going through the other day and I was needing to get some notes put together <clears throat> and, um, and y'all, I would dread it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I would dread <laughs> getting them notes together and, and I was saving it for the last minute. 
And then finally, I just buckled down. I took me a nap and I buckled down and said, you still got to get it done, whether you <laughs> put it off or not. So anyway, I started walking down the hall. And as I was walking down the hall, I remembered I can call upon the Lord to help me. I said, God, I'm going to need your help to make this simple for me. Right. Don't let it be all stressed, stretched out and don't let me be bothered with it. And y'all, before I knew it, God had created such a distraction before me. Two hours had passed by. And y'all, I said, oh, I got two more bullet points to go. I said, Lord, you did it again. And <laughs> all the Lord kept telling me was, is when are you just going to learn how to call up on me at the beginning of it all? You ain't have to go through all of that stuff. Just <laughs> learn how to call on me. And I know how to bring the right distractions into your life. And when God gets through with it, man, he makes it look like a masterpiece. And That's I always right. think, I said, Lord, and just think, I didn't even want to get involved in the thing. So right. I know that That's sometimes right. we all go through through that sometimes and uh, especially even on this singles journey you know we ask those questions when how long I don't want to go through this God you know uh, another relationship all of that <laughs> kind of stuff and the Lord keeps saying when are you gonna call on me you know you stuck in it somewhere you don't know what to do you don't know the right navigation system when are you gonna call upon me in the very moment that we call upon the Lord Y'all, he's a present help in the time of trouble. That's right. And uh, so I say to you all tonight, before we get started, I know Mrs. Cheryl is going to knock the ball out the park, but before <laughs> we get started, listen, why don't you try God first? That's right. Instead of putting stuff in your own hands, why don't you just try him first and uh, let him lead the way, let him guide and redirect, let him reset your course and watch <laughs> God do some amazing things for you tonight. So Ms. Cheryl Dunlap, I'm going to turn it over to you and I'm going to be in the background over here. I got some other paperwork I got to get finished up, but I'm going to let Cheryl be my distraction tonight so I can get this other stuff done that I need to get done. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys be blessed. And I'm going to be in the background also trying to invite others in to join in with us also. You guys be blessed. I think you're on mute, Cheryl. That would help if you could. That, <laughs> that, that would make the difference. Um, so anyway, i um, really excited about uh, tonight. And um, you know what? I was really thinking about um, letting go of the past. And I had several scenarios that, you know, came across my mind to talk about as for um, letting go of the past. And we've actually talked about a number of things as well. Um, so more so than conversation, I just really want to put something on your mind, which is usually the way that I come with some kind of analogy or metaphor um, to think about something um, in a different way, in a different fashion. So um, I'm a foodie and um, I love fine dining. Um, I love dining experiences. So I was like, okay, God, how can I put together this message of letting go <laughs> and connecting it with food? So I came up with something interesting. I've been rewriting it for hours, <laughs> but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you the way that it is. And I think it will bless you because it's really blessed me. So um, it, we're it's September, you know, we're, we're in a new month. And a lot of people feel like, you know, the ninth month of the year is really like birthing season and, and, you know, like new beginnings was August, but September is just like that new space, that new place, right? And it can also mean the end of a cycle. And so I feel like letting go of the past sometimes is just about raising the bar for your future experiences mm. that um, once, once you have let go of the past and once you know that you don't want to go back there again, then what do you open up your mind and your heart to, to move forward? And some people, if they've been hurt or, you know, if it has been a really long time with letting something go, sometimes we create um, boundaries where we, we will say what we will or will not do, or I'm going to be extra careful, or I'm going to try not to make a certain mistake that you feel could have been the catalyst, you know, to um, a bad experience. And so, of course, when I thought about this in 
in comparison with food, I couldn't help but to go back to the children of Israel, right? Okay. And that and being in wilderness, right? And so God delivered them from Egypt, you know, from slavery. And they were in a space where they had to, what should have been just uh, 11 <laughs> days turned out to be 40 years, but that's another conversation. But the point was that he put them in a space so that they could let go of their past. Right. So they could reestablish a relationship with him so that they would be open to the future. Okay. So we all kind of familiar with that story. And so this is where food comes in <laughs> that we, most of the time, we are used to going out to eat traditional restaurants, casual, what is called casual eating restaurants, where, you know, you can get in very quickly, you know, it's, it's convenient, but many times we don't give ourselves the experience of having um, a fine dining meal, which mm -hmm. means many courses, many courses to the meal. So since we're in the ninth month, I'm gonna go with a nine course meal, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna go with a nine course meal here, right? <laughs> so just to kind of open up your mind to um, the difference between casual and fine dining and how this also relates to being in a wilderness experience. So, if you um, are used to, and most of us are used to casual um, dining, that means that our attire, you know, could be anywhere from very, very casual to, you know, nice, but most people don't overdress for a casual restaurant. And I'm saying like a local restaurant, I'm talking about a chain restaurant. Um, it could sometimes even be, you know, like a family owned diner, you know, something that is very casual, casual, you can get in very quickly. Um, there's no dress attire, but if you're in a fine dining restaurant, you have to, um, book your reservation far in advance. You can't just walk up and get in. You have to book it far in advance. You have to be on time and that there is a dress attire that is required of you. And many times with a casual restaurant, maybe you have reservations because you have a big party, but in a fine dining restaurant, you have to have um, a reservation. There is a dress attire. Um, the difference between casual and fine dining, a casual restaurant, the location will be very convenient. Um, it'll be easy to get to. Um, you could drive down a particular area and there's tons and tons and tons of restaurants for you to choose from that you can get in very quickly. But if you're going to go to a, um, a fine dining restaurant, it's usually in a very, very nice area. Mm -hmm. So you're creating an experience here. You know, you make a reservation, you're getting dressed, and now you drive to a beautiful location. And it's usually in a very nice setting. It's in a, a historic or antique type of building. Um, inside of this particular restaurant, it's going to be beautiful art. It's going to be very elegant. Um, the lighting is going to be um, very, very aesthetically pleasing. It's not going to be very bright lights. So you're like building an experience before you actually get there. And I think this really relates to how God was really trying to deliver the children of Israel from their past. All right. So when you go into um, a casual restaurant, you got a menu, you got a la carte, and you can create your own experience from your appetizers to your meal, to <laughs> your dessert, you're in control of what it is that you wanna eat. And there's a wide variety of food that you can choose from when it comes to a casual dining. However, though, if you are a part of a fine dining experience, the meal can be anywhere from five to like 17 courses within the particular meal. So that means that you have to trust what that chef has decided to prepare for that particular day, okay? So another difference between casual and fine dining, you're gonna get one set of silverware at the casual. At the fine dining, you're gonna sit 
at a table setting, which means there's going to be dishes and silverware yeah. for every single course of the meal. Okay, so that means that you got to be able to trust the experience, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, when you're in a casual restaurant, you know, your appetizers and your food sometimes can show up at the same time or very, very close together. When you're in a casual restaurant, sometimes all of your food can show up, excluding the dessert, but like everything is there. And the waiters usually serve you and they make sure everything that you need is there. And pretty much you're on your own until, unless you need something or you wanna order something different, but you're kind of on your own. But when you are in a fine restaurant, each course is served separately, right? And they're served separately and you have different dishes for each experiences because the smells cannot run together. The taste does not run together. So you don't use the same silverware. You don't use the same drinking glass. Each um, course is served separately and each course is a separate experience. You will probably have larger portions at a casual restaurant. You'll probably have food to take home, which was a no-no in, <laughs> in the wilderness. You couldn't save any of your food and have it for later versus in this new experience with, is what God was really trying to condition them with is that you had very small servings you experienced it and, you know, it was enough to actually um, satisfy you. But it's very strategic. The experience is very strategic, right? Let's go to your serving, your, your staff that serves you. You, you have a, um, a very general serving staff. You might have a general cook at a casual restaurant. But when you go into a fine dining experience, you'll have a maitre d' who has you know, extensive knowledge about um, the proper way to eat. Um, you'll have a chef who has studied and um, has you know, a world-class reputation and you're gonna pay the prices <laughs> for that as well. <laughs> yeah. um, but there's also some things that once you are in that dining experience that you really, um... oh, now I'm the host, okay. So <laughs> within that dining experience, <laughs> it's conversation, right? And that was one of the problems with the children of Israel was their conversation. Like they were always talking about their fears. They were always talking about what they didn't have versus, you know, when you're a casual dining experience, you talk about lots of different things. But it is recommended that when you're in a fine dining experience that you talk about progressive things and you talk about yes. positive things. Because remember, you have you have created this experience where you've had a, um, you've been, you're dressed up and you're feeling very good and you have this visual experience on your way to the restaurant, right? And then once you get to the restaurant, all of the atmosphere is really enjoyable, right? It's very, very pleasing. And then you have this meal that is strategically unfolded to you um, at very precise times, right? Um, so you also have like this really great conversation there that adds to the experience that um, of fine dining. So I wanted to also just kind of use those items that I have shared with you is that casual dining is what you're familiar with. And when you go into a fine dining experience, you're opening yourself up, you're raising the bar to yes. what your future is going to look like and what your new experiences look like. Now, in this conversation, I'm not, you know, no shade towards casual dining because I enjoy casual dining too, but I just thought about all the attributes to a fine dining experience and how open you have to be to, um, what this experience will be. Now, sometimes you may know what's on the menu. Sometimes you may not know what's on the menu, but all in all, it is really about the surprise of how God will bless you, right? Um, when you're open 
and when you're at the restaurant, it's about the anticipation and how he how the meal will be delivered to you, so to speak. You guys follow with me? Oh yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So I don't know if we have any new people here in the room, but I'm talking about um, letting go, and I'm comparing it to wilderness experience, children of Israel and having a fine dining eating experience, just in case anybody just came in. So we think about, in this comparison that I just shared with you, in the wilderness, God provided food. He provided mm -hmm. manna, right? Which was transitional food. Um, he provided water. He provided light. Like he provided everything that they needed, but they didn't know that these things would exist for them, but when they needed them, they existed. And these things are very similar to the fine dining experience. So, um, I also realized how, how you are out of your comfort zone when you decide to go and have a meal at a restaurant and you don't necessarily know what the meal will actually be, right? So I thought I would share with you and I wrote this down, what a <laughs> nine course meal, in case anybody was interested in knowing what <laughs> a nine course meal look like and how is it so very um, different from um, traditional dining experience, right? So many, so with a nine course meal, it starts out with um, hors d'oeuvres. And so your hors d'oeuvres could be served at the table or your hors d'oeuvres could be um, served to you as you wait. And so this is really the food, this is really the uh, portion of the meal that's getting you uh, prepared to have a brand new experience with <laughs> eating, right? And right. Um, this could be served during a cocktail hour or it can be um, at your table, right? And then after that, you have a soup. And when it's a fine dining experience, the soup can usually be a very light soup. It's usually a vegetable soup or it's a um, it's like a melon type of soup or a pumpkin soup. So it's something very, very, very light that you'll have as um, your soup. And then it's followed with an appetizer. And so many times the appetizer is your first introduction to food when you're in a <laughs> restaurant. So just look at the things that you miss out on when you're in a casual setting versus allowing yourself to have a new um, experience, right? And so after the appetizer, you'll have a salad. And the salad, again, it sounds like it's a lot of food with nine courses, but it is a very small portions. So you'll have a salad traditional, but it's usually something on the um, visually exotic side for the salad, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, this is the interesting thing. Your next meal, your next course is usually fish, which I thought that was so fascinating when you think about Jesus and feeding yeah. the 5,000 with the fish, <laughs> right? But it's usually fish with a nine course meal. Now, if your meal is more than nine courses, then you'll end up having multiple main dishes. So, but with a nine course meal, your main dish will be a white meat, which I thought was very interesting. It's a white meat. But if you have multiple courses, then your second course would be red meat. This uh, is still all in the same meal, right? Um, and then you have a palate cleanser which cleanses your palate of everything that you have had thus far. And it is usually lemon water or Prosecco or um, something super, super light. Um, and it's usually a beverage that will clean your palate. If you're in a, if you're having a, a meal that's more than nine courses, then the next course would be cheese but Jesus is not here, just FYI, <laughs> just FYI. All right, so your, um, your eighth course will be um, a dessert. And at a fine dining experience, 
um, your dessert is usually paired with wine. And if you don't drink, then it's paired with a non-alcoholic beverage. But it's not just a cake. Like in a traditional casual restaurant, you know, you have ice cream or cake or brownie or something like that. But your desserts are paired um, with a specific beverage. And so your last part of your nine course meal um, is where your coffee comes in and you have like a little bite size. Like, and when I say bite size, it's like a little bite size something <laughs> um, dessert. And that's where you would have, if you're a drinker, you'd have like some kind of scotch or brandy. But if you're not a drinker, then it would be um, some kind of coffee. So with that being said, with a nine course meal, when you open yourself up to different experiences, you find that it's a lot more waiting for you and available for you than what you could possibly see. And that, again, there's nothing wrong with a casual meal, but it is opening yourself up to having something new and maybe not necessarily being familiar with any of the food. Um, that you have experienced on this meal. This one went by way faster than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it went by way faster. Um, so as I wrap this up, and I hope that I made that my metaphor and my comparisons were really, really clear, is that um, a part of um, letting go of the past is is really mirrored in our everyday life, in our everyday experiences. And it doesn't necessarily have to be anything super grand, but I think one of the ways to not go back to your past or to not hold on to it is, is to have that ability to be open um, to something very, very new. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, you know, ask for questions to throw out here because that went by way faster than I thought. I looked at like five times. I'm like, oh my gosh, it went by really fast. Um, I, I wanted to ask that what have you done or what new thing have you tried when you have been healed from the past and you know that you are out of a wilderness experience and you are open into going into your promised land. Does anybody have any um, examples or um, experiences of how they proceeded into a new arena and not um, kind of gone back words when it came to their healing or support? Is that a clear question? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, that's a good question. Um, let's see, for my example, I don't know. Um, let's see, crossing over. <clears throat> I've experienced, not every time, but I experienced where I've done that. And then God will open up an opportunity that would come to me mm -hmm. that I wasn't expecting at all. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and then it's up to you to make that decision. Are you going to go for the opportunity or are you going to clap back or are you going to go back in your shell and say, no, I'm, I'm not ready for that. You know, if, especially if he wants to use you in a way that you've never been used before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and I'm relating that to like ministry, if you will, mm -hmm. not so much of a social situation. Sure. And, and um, you know, when you tell God that I'm ready, you know, I'm ready <laughs> to do it, right? <laughs> I'm ready to do it. And yeah. then the opportunity comes then you might, you might have some reservations, but mm -hmm. then you got to go back and you got to, I feel that you, you should go back and say to yourself, self, why am I feeling like, why am I contemplating mm -hmm. if I should do this or not do this? Mm -hmm. What's holding me back from going forward in this opportunity? Um, 
because if it's something that you're advancing yourself or you're, or you're expanding yourself and mm-hmm. doing something different, mm-hmm. that's that to me seems like, okay, well, someone is validating you coming out you know, giving you that opportunity to be solid and say, hey, this is my, this is my new, this is where I'm starting. If I don't do it, then I'm going back into, you know, into, um, to slavery, you might, if you will. Absolutely, into bondage. Mm -hmm. bondage. I'm going back to bondage and I'm not being the free vessel that he wants me to be. Absolutely. So really, it's really uh, retracting with who you really say you are or who he's called you to be. And you're really telling God, God, you're wrong. <laughs> mm. You know, and, mm-hmm. and who, who, who are we to tell the creator <laughs> who created us that he's wrong? Mm. No, it's something wrong with us. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what we need mm-hmm. to go back and go back. I mean, I would hate for us to, to do that, to have to go back to the drawing board to the point where you say no and, and then you got to go through that whole season again. So, you know, if we don't learn that lesson during that time, you will have opportunity to go back. You will. You, you do will have, have opportunity, opportunity to go back. back. Yeah, and you will go back if you don't, you know, if you don't go forward. Now, I'm not saying that the opportunity that you have you might have some some you know situations it might not be smooth sailing Mm -hmm. but I think he's equipped us to work through that you know to get you have people around you you might have resources you might have to break down pride and, and say hey hey Cheryl I'm getting ready to take you know take this new assignment but I really feel like I'm not qualified for it for these reasons or do you have something that you can, you know, either wisdom or give me some strategies or something that I can go forward? I want to go forward in it. And I believe God will meet you and, and pull you forward. I agree. There, there's definitely a vulnerability. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about the children of Israel, mm-hmm. and there was definitely a vulnerability, you know, yes. when they're completely out of um, your comfort zone, even if it was a not favorable, negative, you know, mm-hmm. um, comfort zone, and there could be fear, you know, yeah. of the yeah. new space, right? But when I thought about the that vulnerability, and I thought about um, if I suggested to my friends, "Hey, let's go eat. Let's 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 try a nine course." 10 course meal how many people if money wasn't the issue just wouldn't do it because they were not in control yeah they were not familiar That's they right. were just not they would not have the experience yeah and they would have they would find something wrong with everything like why do i gotta dress up you know why yeah. do we have to wait for yeah. a reservation to get there right. and you right. know why are these portions so small you know they could just find so many so reasons many. Yeah. to have the not have the experience or they could still even show up to the experience, but <laughs> criticize it. That's right. Like the children of Israel did, right? They criticized the whole experience. Oh, yes. Everything think, was wrong, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's a cultural thing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, just for a good example about or that, that we can really make it like today. Absolutely. <laughs> today, <clears throat> There was an announcement, and, and probably has been out there for a while, but it was just more publicized today about a Bank of America that has yes. a program now for um, mm-hmm. for people of color, um, Blacks, mm-hmm. and also Brown Americans that can acquire uh, home loans in order to purchase a home, and also they don't have to put a down payment or p- pay closing costs. Mm-hmm. So. You know, they had a YouTube on it. I got something on YouTube. I saw it on Channel 5 News. They had a, 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 a clip on that. And I got it from some people, you know, that sent the information to me. I shared it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My daughter shared it. And so my daughter and I had a conversation this afternoon. She said, Mom, I just don't understand our folk <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> 
because they have an opportunity. You know, you might not have all the information, but that's why you take your behind down to Amer to Bank of America and find out the information, you know, about the program. You know, everybody might not meet the criteria, but right. some people will say, well, why are they doing that? They never did that for us. And, and you know how Bank of America, how they treat this and that, you know, they have all these negative, you know, things mm -hmm. or connotations mm -hmm. about whatever is going on instead of embracing all of the banks are crooked. All of them didn't treat us right. All of them, don't, don't think that SunTrust or Regions or Southside Bank is even any better than Bank of mm -hmm. America. They all lumped in there together. And mm -hmm. so why do we always have to have a negative spin on it? Instead of just going and finding out the information. What if that was the opportunity that mm -hmm. could unlock you into generational wealth for your for your family? It could be this the beginning of other investments coming down the road. You don't have mm -hmm. they don't look at they might look at your debt uh, to income ratio. They might look at that, but they weren't looking at no credit score. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things in there, you know. But, you know, you always have one that says, well, that's not going to fit me. Well, okay, it won't fit you, but my, it might fit your cousin. Yeah. Share the information. Why are we always <laughs> like that? It's just so sad, you know. And so I can relate that to, you know, what you were saying as far as the fear. Are you mm -hmm. afraid that mm -hmm. somebody's going to, you know, not give you your opportunity. You don't want to even try to apply or find out the information. But you, you, yeah, but you got a negative, something negative about it. It's something you don't even know nothing about. That's mm -hmm. right. And so it, it, it takes that first step, you know, so. No, I, I totally well, agree. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I was going to say this, just listening. Um. Poverty has many roots, but the tap root is ignorance. Mm -hmm. this is true. And see, you don't have to be ignorant unless you just choose to stay there. And, and, and again, finding all the excuses, why are they doing this for me? Blah, 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 blah. But right. all of that is a, to me, that's a cover up. The underlying thing is kind of like what Cheryl was talking about. I think the underlying thing is fear. Mm -hmm. And so you'll make up all these excuses, like you were saying about taking your girlfriend to this nice restaurant or whatever. The underlying thing is fear when you throw all these things out here. Money wasn't the problem. So mm -hmm. it's, it's that thing within a person that, um, you know, I stay here. Fe I mean, when you stretch, and even with the children of Israel, Mm -hmm. They were slaves mm -hmm. and they kept a slave mentality, even though they were free. Mm -hmm. They didn't know nothing about being slaves, but that don't way you have to stay because mm -hmm. you have to start where liberty starts and liberty starts between your ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way you think, mm -hmm. change your thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and, and most people rather die than think, so they die. Because we are thinking is hard work. Well, <laughs> is it? And, you got, and that's what I'm saying. So they, they talk themselves out of that for the, mm -hmm. the fact that our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're more powerful and beyond. Mm -hmm. But you got to dig, dig, dig into that and get that going. Uh, otherwise, you find all the excuses and you'd be negative and you just negative energy to be negative energy. Right. And that's that. That is. The opportunity is here. You just can't mm -hmm. see it or, yes. or don't want to see it or, or haven't changed the way you, you think to see it. If it's here, if it's here, like you said, Faith, Whatever's been done, it's irrelevant. Take this opportunity and prepare yourself where you need to be. Uh, you know, that's kind of 
my thoughts on that. And um, a lot of people are still in the wilderness. This road, this kind of rotating around and they don't have to. It's almost like they've recaptured, even though they're free from Massa, they've started to be their own kidnapper mm. and keep yourself in this space that you, you're not meant not to grow, but you got to understand you are meant to grow. Anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on that, Cheryl. No, it is. It's, it's really about, it is about the experience and, and letting go of our past. Like mm -hmm. we are in that space. I think we're always in that space. When we are yeah. healing, when you make a conscious decision to heal and to grow, then mm -hmm. you're in that space of yes. having a new experience, right? Yes, yes. To show you that you don't have to stay there. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the midst of a new experience and you're finding something wrong with it, like Faith yes. says, then you're, you're, you're still right there. And with the Bank of America, you're true. You're so right. There's so much conversation about it. And guess what? You don't know if you go down there and apply, if it will be for you. Right. Like You don't right. really know because right. everyone doesn't have all the details thus far. Right, is that? Uh, don't have all the details. Just like they don't have the details with the cancellation of the student loans. But right. it's like all of this chatter about it, but nobody has the facts. And so you're already making decisions mm -hmm. about what you're going to do, if you're going to apply, if it works for you. And, and so that's why I use like the, the, the food experience, because mm -hmm. it's giving you an opportunity to see something different, you yes. know, and that yeah. with the children of Israel, he changed their location, you know, yes. he changed the lighting, he changed the, he gave them <laughs> transitional food so that, you know, that palate cleanser, he gave us them transitional food so that they could let go, not just the mindset of the wilderness, the food was connected to it, the faith was connected to it, yes. um, their, their visual <laughs> was connected to yes. it. So when you go from that casual to that fine, like, everything about that experience is different and it just started to make me think about how God does that when you're in a new space right everything is different yeah he yeah. provides everything that is different but you just have to be able to see it if that makes sense yeah 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 makes a whole lot of sense yeah and and I think another thing to bring up Cheryl if I may is that sure. They were privy to miracles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, where else you get um, free health insurance to tell you healing, water when you need it. Mm -hmm. If you want to, they change the menu. We don't mm -hmm. like this. Okay, God provide them with a new menu every day. All mm -hmm. of this is happening with yeah, you time. privy to it. Mm -hmm. You walking through dry land and there was water there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking a little water. I'm talking about what do you, you are surrounded by all of this, but you can't see it. Because I always say the eyes are useless when the mind is blind. Blind, 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 blind. That's just, wow. Mm -hmm. Miracles happen around you, you can't see. And then you get to a point, you say, ah, is he coming back out of the mountain and this and that? Yeah, he comes down and tell you this and that. But before he he's gets comes back down, why he leave us out here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't come this far and forgot? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you should, how do you forget you forgot? How does that work? And I'm not trying to be overly dramatic, but again, but how does that work? Mm -hmm. And would we be like that if we were privy to certain miracles? There are still miracles happening today. Every day. I think you have to have a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that. Uh, uh, of course, Miracles, you say, and we talk about that part of 
fear. Mm -hmm. Miracles is the change in perception from love, from fear to love. Mm -hmm. And walk into God and allow God to pour in your heart so you overcome fear mm -hmm. and remove that. Mm -hmm. But that's a, it's like you said, Faith, that's a, a choice. But anyway, I ain't trying to hog the conversation, but I'm just no, saying. No, no, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? It made me realize that it's not as difficult as we make it out to be. Mm -hmm. And that there are always signs around us that our healing process is available to us, that the change that we're looking for is available to us. But if we can only, if we are stuck in our past, Mm -hmm. you know and you don't trust the future that's where the wilderness comes from yes and you could yeah. end up there 11 11 days <laughs> or 40 years like you know yes. you, can, you can make your choice of how long it's there but we have to be able to see god working yeah. yes you know you have to be able to you have to want to see him one right and and if you want to see him working then to be able to identify that, but I, it's very difficult if not, you know, if you're not there. So, yes. um, so I wanted to also ask if anyone feels like they're still in a wilderness experience today. Does anybody feel like they're still in a wilderness experience? Like they know that they're healing, but they're still in that space where they're trying to identify that God is working, like God is moving in their life. Come to this chat. Okay. Nobody? Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Robin. Hey, this is that's a really good question. I'm sitting here like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have an answer to that. I'm just really like, hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, that just caused me to look at the different areas of my life real quickly to see if, if, you know, there is wilderness experience in any of the areas. Mm -hmm. so, it's a really thought-provoking question. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I can honestly say that I think I'm still, I know I'm still in a wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. I'm in a wilderness experience. Um, and it looks different. <laughs> you know, it doesn't always look the same. But right now I'm in a wilderness experience just by being in a new space, you know, in a mm -hmm. new location. You know, it's all new experiences here. I am not familiar with the experiences that I'm having at this point in my life. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's fear, but I would say that the lack of familiar makes me uncomfortable. And so that can um, be that, that catalyst in my life if that makes sense, um, to move forward or to be stuck. You know, it's just that uncomfortability in being in a new space. I've taken it for granted that the spaces that I was in, I knew what I was doing. And now I'm in a space where I'm a student and mm -hmm. I got to learn, I got to watch and I got to pay attention. And I don't necessarily know what's happening or understand, you know, how it's all coming together. And that is extremely uncomfortable, but you said the other day that that seed of uncomfortability is right, when right. you know like he's really, really working in your life. That's right. And, and I started to think about um, different times where I actually did, you know, heal from my past, but it was something required of me mm -hmm. that I was unwilling to do. Mm -hmm. That was always the, the catalyst. And anybody jump in. I, I don't want to hog the conversation, but um, I was another story that I had to share was forgiving someone. And I forgive someone that I had held something against them for 
way too long. Let's put it that way. I ain't gonna put a number on the years, but it was way too <laughs> long. And um, but it was something that I prayed to God about, and I could not let it go. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and so for anybody who's just kind of jumped in the room, we're talking about letting go of the past. This was something that I didn't know how to let go. It was something mm -hmm. that I prayed about for a very long time, but I also used the unforgiveness as protection mm -hmm. of it never happening again, if that makes sense, right? right. And um, God put me in a new location mm -hmm. and he put me in seminary school. And in seminary school, there's a, a Christian sorority. So there was a classmate that um, asked me to come with her because she was interested in whatever that process was. They had like a luncheon. Went to the luncheon and it was really nice to be um, a part of a Christian sorority. Young lady spoke and she spoke about forgiveness. So, you know, God know how to get your, like, not get your attention, but slap you in the face with right. it, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so um, she spoke about forgiveness, and then she made us do an exercise. And in the exercise, we had to write down on a piece of paper all of the people that we need to ask forgiveness for. And then on another piece of paper, she asked us to write down people that we need to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then she gave us time to pray and allow God to lead us to the person on that list that, you know, just really stuck out that he wanted us to deal with it. And then we had to find someone in the room that we had never met before and role play it out. Mm. Wow. wow. Uh, and so God put it on my heart to ask forgiveness of the person that I felt like had done the, the worst to me, like the worst harm to me, that this is the person that I couldn't forgive for decades. Mm -hmm. um, and it was decades. I can be transparent enough to say that. <laughs> I couldn't let this go. And that was the person's name. And God told me in the role play that I needed to ask that person for forgiveness for mm -hmm. holding the unforgiveness against <laughs> them for all of these years and so I found a stranger and I and I went up to her and I was like okay this is the person this is the situation and you know for real God like this is what you got to do and I only got out like a couple of words and then I started to hyperventilate mm. Mm. I started hyperventilating because God showed me that even though that person did me wrong, the way that I handled it mm -hmm. was wrong by holding the unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I never got out the rest of the words. I just hyperventilated, hyperventilated, hyperventilated. I mean, it was because it was decades of stuff that had to come out. Mm -hmm. Now, the person who wronged me was a man. So just say how God works, right? So a week later, I'm in a men's ministry class in seminary school. 28 men in the class and me. And so they're all looking at me like, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And so I told them, I was like, look, I just forgave this person. This person is a monster to me. And I need you to help me humanize this man. Mm -hmm. And so I told them the story and we were in a class for three days. It was a Friday night, all day Saturday and an all day Sunday. And when I tell you those men, I became the class project <laughs> for this particular <laughs> class. But right. I also was able to, you know, give them a female perspective on some things. Um, so then God made me after that, go back to that person and invite them out and apologize to them. And I'm gonna tell you, I got a list that is long, that goes to the ceiling of what they did wrong to me. <laughs> as wide as this room of what they did to me, but he told me to apologize to them for the way that I handled 
what they did to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's been three years and our relationship has really and truly improved. But I didn't have a right to punish nobody mm -hmm. with it. So, um, but I had to walk through the door of changing my life and going to seminary school and not knowing that that's what he was going to do in that space. But it led to my forgiveness. So it has letting go of the past has always for me required me to be in I had to stretch myself and put myself in places where I had no control I was unfamiliar and I had to be open mm -hmm. yeah that's really good that's really good it is yeah yeah I know for myself that <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> The, I think when you forgive, I mean, one of the hardest situations in my life was when I when I divorced. And it wasn't so hard, actually, when it happened. I think it was hard coming to the resolve that that's what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. and, and once that decision was made, it was just, you know, the process of going through that. But I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced this situation, but when, when I was married, I think I was divorced before the marriage or before the divorce actually happened. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, already having the mindset that finality was on its way and, you know, what I was going to do, but to the point, all those things are just in motion. You know, those are things that are gonna happen. You know, when you divorce, you know, you're not gonna be together. So, you know, it's a separation, you know, you have to find another place to live. So you go boom, 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 you do all that. But when you get to the place where you're gonna be by yourself, you know, in that, in that apartment, house, wherever you choose to live, then you kind of, you say, mm, so this is finality to, you know, to that, you see that you're by yourself, nobody's there except, you know, your kids or whatever. But um, then you have to start thinking about what did you, what did, what did I come out of? Mm -hmm. You know, what did I come out of? You were so busy about dealing with trying to get away now you're there and now you have to deal with what did I come out of? Mm -hmm. So with that, I think the best thing that ever happened to me in that situation is that I learned how to forgive. Mm -hmm. And I learned and I learned how to forgive quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, quickly. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. no, I was very, very quick. And I didn't even know really the benefits of that. I didn't know the benefits of that until act, actually years after, you know, sometimes we do things. We don't even know what we're doing, how, how the, how the big effect is going to be on your life, mm -hmm. how the trajectory changes in your life because you, you do that. And I mean, because doors open mm -hmm. for me, promotion open for me. I was able to do things that I didn't think I could ever do on my own, but it was because of that. It's because I moved on. Mm -hmm. I, I moved on. I said, and plus another thing I think that was very beneficial. I wasn't in the same location. Mm -hmm. I, I, I moved away from it. Yeah. And when you, when you have, when you can do that, and that was God in itself. Cause I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do nothing. Let me tell you, if you looked at my bank account, it, I, and I really didn't have a bank account on my own. I mean, we had our, all of our money together, but when God, when, when God releases you and when he gives you a plan and mm -hmm. he tells you to move out, you got to move out. You cannot sit there and contemplate, well, what is this going to happen? Well, what is that going to happen? You know, mm -hmm. all, you, can't, you can't do that because when he does it, he does it in such 
a magnificent way where he promotes you, get a new job. He pays for you to get there, move your stuff, move your, your, all your belongings. Um, you stay in a hotel until you find out, you know, where you want to live. Then he sets you up where he wants you, where you're going to live to all that, all that stuff happened. Boom, boom, boom. Like clockwork. Mm -hmm. That's God right there. Yes. It's not like I got God, I gotta, I gotta fix it, or I gotta make the plan. He mm -hmm. he made the plan. So when he starts working like that, you know you're flowing in a God thing. You know, mm -hmm. and so when you get there to that place where he sets you up and you see all what he has done, you say, Okay, I forgive God. Of this mm -hmm. movie. You know, you like you just give it up, and it's like, okay, I'm in a new season. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk one little step. <laughs> I'm just gonna, right. you know, yeah. move out. Yeah. And hey, if I make a mistake or if I turn the wrong way or whatever, okay, okay, I retract. I go back. You, you, you yeah. have lessons through, even through the wilderness, because you asked that question. I was gonna chime in on it. You said, "Has anybody been through? You know, are in a wilderness right now?" Well, you know, we might we might have come out of a wilderness or out mm -hmm. of a season, you know, yes. and, and you're at that place, but you can be out of a situation and still be in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about that? You you're out, but you're still in the wilderness because you don't have a plan of what you're gonna do after you get out. Or you're not even open to do something different to walk in it. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. To give you an example is what right. I use with the food. Like, get a taste of something new. You know, That's right. experience something new mm -hmm. that is out of your comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. And just real quick, I wanted to not forget the uh, chat oh, room. Yeah. Tamara said a good sharing about forgiveness, that she learned the same thing, faith, through the process. Mm -hmm. um forgiving quickly yeah i do believe because this person that i forgave yesterday was actually the third year anniversary mm -hmm. third yeah the third year anniversary of me doing mm -hmm. my part because mm -hmm. after i forgave it took about mm, two years before i actually did it mm -hmm. um but yesterday was the anniversary and I actually caught the person and say, oh my gosh, can you believe it's like been a couple years. I know that I'm in a new season because of it. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm in a new season. Like mm -hmm. I know everything that is going on in my life is because I let that go. Yeah. And I believe that it has, some things have been held up in my life with yeah. progress yeah. with my prayers being answered yeah. because yeah. of that unforgiveness because yeah. now it's like like life yeah. is speeding forward and it's like stuff happening, happening, <laughs> happening. i'm like whoa 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 yeah. whoa whoa yeah. but it was like okay so here it is i thought that unforgiveness was doing this blocking me protecting mm -hmm. me and i realized that my that the guard wasn't any good for me right. that being guarded because you know how people get hurt and they'll say well i'm not going to do this again and i'm not going to do this. you right. know like they'll get divorced and say i don't mm -hmm. know i'm probably not going to get married again i'm not going to trust nobody like mm -hmm. you know they already decide like what the future is mm -hmm. that's exactly what that guard is yeah that's and that guard is doing nothing, nothing. for that's right. you whatsoever right. but mm -hmm. just helping you stay right there mm -hmm. and not have that's the right. ability to grow right um yeah it's yeah. it's time to live okay <laughs> it's time to live and you know i really um commend uh joyce myers a couple years ago where she kind of did a turn on her ministry and she said you have to enjoy life yes you got to enjoy life i mean in this christian walk that we walk you know so many feel like I don't want to be a Christian because it's boring. I, you know, I it's so many. Way. Yeah, it's 
I used it's to feel so that way. Many compartmental, yeah. We compartmentalize so many people to feel like they can't be a real person. They can't do real life things. They can't go here. It's always, I can't, you can't, you can't do this. You <laughs> well, what can I do? Tell that's me. How, that's what, that's what you know, what can I do, right? And so, um, uh what, what can I do? And so um, Friday night, I had uh, like a, a daughter, like she's like a daughter to me. She came in town with her stepfather and they were doing a tour of Texas, right? And so um, they left Austin, went to San Antonio, went to Houston, came up here to the DFW and they just wanted to go out and hear live music. And I'm like, okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, mm, where, should, where, can I, where can I take them? Because it's been so long since I've been out. Since right. COVID, it's, it's like, almost like, I don't even know what to wear. What the, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> this whole situation with COVID is totally kind of, yes. really kind of can put me in, in the house. I haven't been out a whole lot, right? So all this is new. So I took them to uh, this spot over in, 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 in Irving and they have live music. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what they wanted to hear. And we had dinner there. You know, we had a good time. People's birthdays, you know, they were celebrating birthdays and everything. Yeah, they were serving alcohol or whatever. But just that because they serve alcohol, if you don't drink, you, you know, a glass of wine or whatever, doesn't mean that you can't go and sit and participate. Because some, you know, some of our brothers and sisters get hung up on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't socialize. Oh, no, they're going, you know, like they're going to impart themselves on you and you and it's going to turn your spirit, <laughs> you know, into something. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. got to we got to really let it go, you know, be free. Stop being yeah. so tense, you know, and like you can't do certain things. Yes, you can do certain things. Oh, yeah. You know, you yeah. can you can line dance. It's all right. <laughs> the chow -chow -chow -chow. Oh, yeah. You know, we doing it unto him. You know, it's okay to do the lecture slide, slide. You sliding out of out of the wilderness. You know, you <laughs> you're going into the you going into a new you make it work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You know, sometimes you got to give yourself a break. Yeah. Give yourself a break and yeah. just relax <laughs> just have this enjoy life yes you no know, right. it was good to hear live music yeah this weekend I just I'm, think going it's the the, type of the music. I'm going to the jazz fest this weekend of course. and yeah. i said i'm going to the riverfront jazz fest i'm going okay. to see all my boys they're always going to be there i've never seen boney james in mm -hmm. in concert i'm going i'm seeing boney i'm oh yeah that. Mary Meadows, I'm seeing Bob yeah. James, I'm seeing Robert <laughs> Glasper, I'm seeing all of them. <laughs> all yeah. going to be there one night. And so I'm going one night. So, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? And I I'm gonna, if I want to get up and, 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 and move and say, I'm going to do that too. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know it's just going to be a, a freeing time when, you know, you have, or I could say myself, where I've been at home and not really out. I, I feel like I'm living again, you know, like we're in this world. I mean, we're in the world, we're not of the world, right? But we still can enjoy life. Absolutely. Especially I, I, single. You got mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but you live in a blessed life. Absolutely. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the key. And it doesn't say you take yourself out of you. Because no. life, life loves the liver of life. So mm -hmm. join life. Some people don't know what life looks like. And the thing about it is life wants to join you if you allow it. And wow. it doesn't yeah, take nothing from you. As a matter of fact, even when we go through our trials or whatever, um, life is not happening to us. Life is happening for us. Mm. We just sometimes, but in any of that, whether it's good, bad, and different, our Lord and Savior is still there. Right. You have to be in the, the, the nowness. Cheryl, you was talking about 
the nowness, the present moment. Be present in that present moment. Whatever it brings, you are equipped to deal with that. Because where can you go that God is not? Just know that God is with you through it all. Mm-hmm. That's that's the, the thing is don't lose sight of that. And and the children of Israel don't. I mean, you sorry. think about think about this for a moment. And I know we got to get through. You have a thirty mile walk that costs you forty years. What kind of logic is that? just walking around in a circle and you didn't have to. 30 miles, 40 years, that's a generation. <laughs> but you, you, can ha- you can still have that type of mindset in today, mm-hmm. but you have to open yourself up. You know, you was talking about and not just coming that you share, mm-hmm. but the, that that for, that unforgiveness. See, we I think we think that unforgiveness is for the other person. It's actually for you. Mm-hmm. It's to release you. You were saying because we don't get the blessings of God in disobedience. So delayed obedience is disobedience. However, that is. But once we do that, who is free? You're free to let him download that file that was in trust because you was in distrust. Mm -hmm. And now it's opening and God has this flow. You're saying doors are opening, all this opportunity? Yes, because you're in the will. You're doing the will of the Father. And that's what you were saying, Faith. You do the will of the Father, and then doors will open because you're in the flow. You're in that picture of God, which is the universe, love, harmony, and cooperation within the person to allow this loving God to pour his love into his loving creature, which is us, to be called children of God. Amen. It's a, and you talking about blowing your mind? Yes, it will. I mean, you, you, you can have, and I have, I have smoked a joint before. You, that's a high. But when God blow your mind, that's a dope. Ain't no high ever been like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, but you know, I'm just saying, just you yeah. know, putting it in a scenario or whatever. But right. um, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's amazing. But anyway, I passed the mic. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you know, it, it is. It is a. It's wasted time. Yes. I think about the time that I wasted, yeah. what I prevented, that everything that I was asking God for, I was preventing it from arriving. And well, it so, just don't make any sense. I'm grateful that I'm here today. Right. But just for anybody else that's in that space, right. that feel like they, I used to feel like I had a right to be in unforgiveness. Like I had a right to be mad at this person. Yeah. You know, I just feel like I had a right. It's ridiculous today. But at the time I felt like I had a right. And I know that God restores everything, you know, whether it's time, whatever. He, God can restore anything. Mm-hmm. But I still think there are some things that A waste of time. Mm-hmm. I could have been happy or a long time ago. Let's put it that way. I could have been happy a long time ago. Yeah. And, so, and yeah, some yeah. of these same things could have happened a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't worth it. But I'll say this too before we wrap it up is that when you are in that space where you can't forgive, you you find yourself drawing to the people that sustain it, you know, whether Mm -hmm. it's relationships or whatever, or the mindsets, you know, you start thinking in lack, you behave in lack, you know, everything you start to um, hear in the midst of it, you know, it may be many voices said, 
you know, all you got to do is just come over here. I got you. But you'll hear tons and tons of voices that will make you think it's not possible for you. You know, that made is not possible for you because of all the things that's going on in the world or, you know, that door is not going to open because we're looking at Tabitha Brown, you know, situation <laughs> where, you know, they they don't like who she is and she's being herself. Like you just think some things are not um, available to you. And it's one of the reasons why I enjoy her journey is because she stayed oh, I love herself. Mm -hmm. She stayed true to herself. Mm -hmm. um and she never stopped believing and we just we watched her just keep blowing up and blowing up I mean just oh it was just oh like, yeah go to Target oh my goodness yeah, go to Target Everywhere. and she got a line of clothes uh furniture house seasonings wear, everything everything hair products I, I mean everything but like like you said, it might be a it might be a pot of people over here that don't like her. But look at all the millions of people that she's mm -hmm. in. Who cares about that pot over there? Oh okay. yeah, Forget exactly. About that pot. Forget and I saw about a... the pot, but mm -hmm. she's so authentic, you know. And and she when she speaks, it's almost like she she has you and her in that focus. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. You know? It, yeah, I mean, she knows how to just draw you in, you know. <laughs> you know I mean, no, really, it's just like, yeah. like yeah. she's talking to you. Yeah, like you have this one-on-one, -on -one, you know, relate relationship, you know, friendship or whatever. It, it's really, um, it's a, a beautiful gift she has. Yeah, it really and, is. And what I love, what I love about her, y'all, is that she always, always mm -hmm. gives the glory to God. Always. Sure yes. Yeah. That's she, right. Uh, everything she does, she mentions his name. She never takes the credit. And I think that that's what makes the followers follow her and the haters mm -hmm. hate her. She drawing people. Uh, she yeah. really is. And I saw Shelly um today. There's a movement of people um because they were saying that um, because you know they moved the time of her show. So I saw someone say that you all you have to do is go and DVR it and you need to watch it within the week of you DVR and she still gets the same ratings. And um, and they're saying that to say, like, look, we go like regardless of what y'all do and wherever you put her, we still <laughs> she's still gonna be one of the top people on your yeah. station because we got her. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's really dope. And she doesn't need to be even be on their channel. It's like, you know, oh. sometimes we dip it, we dip into things that God said, that's not what I want you to do. So, yes, you know, she doesn't need to be on their platform. She can do that all by herself. The yes. same way Tyler Perry made his own way, you know, his mm -hmm. own platform. Um, she can do the same thing. She she's already done the same thing. She she had her own successful social media platform. So she could have just created this this type of genre on her own platform. She don't need Food Network to do that. So, you know, it, it's just things like that. Like we we as especially black people, we just assume that we need to have these these different uh doors to be open for us. Well we don't. We can create those doors ourselves. You know. She can do that door herself. They they took her down to a to a, a door of the day hour where you know, they know everybody at work, <laughs> you know, nobody's gonna be watching it. But they forgot that we could still we could still you know record and and watch her. So it's <laughs> just it's silly. They 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 whoever they are. I don't you know want to put a race on it, but whoever they are that try to keep us down, um, they they never win. And I don't know why they they just don't stop. Just stop. <laughs> you can't <laughs> win what God has blessed. No man no. can hurt. That's just it. Yeah, that's you know true. what, Shirley? I think sometimes it's just about. Um, changing the narrative or taking the narrative back. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. Tabitha yeah. Brown has had so many doors open. Did like everybody in the world come after this woman after she ate this sandwich? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the whole world came at her. She's on the sleep app. I mean, she just like, she's got the kids show. She's got so line of like everything. You could just create this like long list of everything Tabitha Brown, right? Um, but sometimes it's just about changing the narrative because mm -hmm. maybe it's about the audience is supposed to really decide. 
Mm-hmm. What's on television, right? Because we're watching it, right? Lady. And sometimes there's people making decisions about things in higher places, and it ain't just necessarily television that are making decisions where it's really it's our time and it's our dollars mm-hmm. that can change things and move things. And we need to be reminded of the power that we have. Mm-hmm. That's right. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? The power that we have. We really do yeah. have a whole lot of power, which is a perfect way to wrap up this uh, conversation <laughs> is that the that is the power is available to us. The power right. is within us, you know? That's right. It's not some foreign thing mm-hmm. that is just totally inaccessible to, to us. Um, the power to leave things in the past, the power to forgive. Yes. And the power to come out of a wilderness experience, which I think we're always in and out of wilderness experiences <laughs> in this life, but that's just how we grow, right? right. Um, I never knew how available it was, mm-hmm. how close it was. You know, you've yes. been praying for something for years and years and years, and then you realize it was like right there all the time. Yes, yeah. that's right. And I'm just like right there all the time. Um, and I just feel like, you know, I'm getting mm-hmm. older. I used to be experiencing <laughs> some yeah. things. You know what I'm saying? I, I need all of this yeah. now. I don't need yeah. to, you know, be fighting with my ego and my pride. And God, it's, <laughs> it's a losing yeah, it <laughs> battle anyway. Right. right? And I think, I think too, Cheryl, what we learn, power over others is weakness disguises power. True power has always been within the person. Mm, already with them. Mm. It's already there. Already you just there. have to tap into that. Yep. Because exactly. you know, yeah, but it's but the there. world the world operates totally different. It sure does. Uh, faith. We yeah. have leaders. We have leaders that are really weak. Mm-hmm. We do. You know, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, do you remember Joe this okay so let's go back to crucial conversations okay so remember that picture that one Thursday I showed with the lady and she had like five and six bags on her Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know I just had that picture just then we gotta take the weight off of us yes yeah we got to take yeah. the, you know, disappointment, the unforgiveness. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, I don't look the right way. I, you know, I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too, you know, I don't have enough money. I don't have the right clothes. I, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. Take it off. Mm-hmm. Run, just take it off of yourself so you can be light. Yes. You yeah. know, in your spirit, you know, yeah. light in your spirit. And then when you're lighting your spirit, it will reflect out. It, it will it will be like a magnet. You know, you start magnetizing people to you because of the weightlessness in your yeah. life. Right, right, right. Well, Erica Badu has that song, Bag Lady. Mm-hmm. Have you guys oh, heard that song, right. Bag Lady, yeah. You Gonna Miss Your Bus? Yeah. And bragging all them bags, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You gonna miss it. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't miss the bus or the transfer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of them secular songs be having more wisdom in them, you know, than you right. really think about. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. Well, you really, yeah. Just like the hymn, Tiny. You think, oh, God, if I hear another hymn at church, but whoa, will you get like my age and those hymns start coming up and you're like, Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, I I I, I know it those hymns well. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it hit in a different way. All right, I'm gonna share this too real quick, and then I know because we already have like ten minutes over. Um, anybody listening, just on my heart to say this. You know, they talk about six degrees of separation um, from anybody that you need or the relationship. You know that God is trying to bring together. You know to open up the doors in your life, we're just way closer than six degrees. Way, way closer than six degrees of separation. That when you're doing your work, that those um, layers of separation is just reduced, just like the bags. 
it is it is just it is just reduced. I ran into um, I was here downtown, well nearby, at an art show here in my area, and um, went into this booth, the last booth before I left it, and this artist had um, art that had music with it you know it had pianos and horns and stuff and so I asked him I was like hey are you um are you a um a musician and he's like no I'm a sound engineer and I was like oh so who are the artists he started naming all of these artists um and he named Maxwell mm -hmm. and he said he was sound engineer for Maxwell for his first show anyway I went to that concert in 1997 or 1998 and I met him then like that many years ago and ran into him at an art show 1997 yeah. 1998 and I was in college at the time was doing interviews for the newspaper so we were <laughs> waiting for the show and I was like hey let me talk to the sound people get a story here right but just all of these years, he doesn't even live here. He lives in another state. But just how God can just orchestrate yes. that moment. Yes, that's right. <sighs> that's blissful moments. It was just like, wow. And, yeah. you know, maybe to the average person, that was no big deal. But I'm mm -hmm. like, he orchestrated that moment. Yes. And I know there's other moments that are big like that um, in my life. And I don't take any of them for granted. But... I just happened to stop there. Right. I happened to meet this guy. Happened to talk to him. So it's all more to that whole story. But <laughs> I'll just say, like, you just, that degree yes. of separation is, when you start healing, it's just so very different. Yes. All right. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Because we over. We need to go. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you. Everybody in the chat room, Robin and Tamara. I saw Shelly. Um, thank you guys for um, joining in the chat. I hope my uh, examples um, blessed you yeah. tremendously. I, hey, Cheryl. Yes. I got something, what happened real quick. Sure. Okay, we're September. We're in September. I can't yes, believe are. how fast we are, but just mm -hmm. receive it that this is going to be a September to remember. That's all right i like that mm -hmm. <laughs> september, to, september remember. to remember yeah mm -hmm. now that's that's the theme for the month yes okay that's the theme that's for the month remember mm -hmm. okay we got um thank you robin um who is h hill um i now this time is not is that oh hold on tracy tracy okay tracy Okay, she said, um, the, but I just want to say I'm sorry, everybody, when I didn't respond earlier, a friend rang my doorbell as oh. I was coming on. Then I had, I have been having back-to-back -back calls from family, my friends praying coming to visit. Her. Yeah, yeah, definitely praying, 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 praying. Mm -hmm. No, we appreciate, we're glad that you were able to hang out, and I hope that uh, something that you heard was comfort for you and we're gonna leave out of this with a september to remember i, I receive and claim all of that mm -hmm. Oof. i feel it lord god <laughs> right right Ooh, lord <laughs> jesus Come on, is, is miss marilyn coming to to take us out <laughs> september to remember oh yeah that's nice that so is that certain... just open is that just open or are we going to be specific? Are we just going to be like, okay. We're going to be open. Just whatever that is. Hey, whatever that is. That it's, nine course meal. That nine course meal. It's a nine course <laughs> meal. In whatever September. it is, we're going to receive it. You know? Hey, yeah. whatever you, you know, whatever you get, whatever you receive, whatever you give. You, mm -hmm. even you giving could be some i uh, help someone september to remember right and then mm -hmm. you know luke 6 38 when we give it shall be given unto back to us good measure piss down shaking together and run it over mm -hmm. <laughs> then give into your bosom so yes, hey my bosom's ready 
I don't know about y'all, but ready? Yeah. Come on in. Come with mm. me. Mm. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. With this new season upon us. Um, yes. Absolutely. I'm excited about it. Okay, I think Marilyn went away, so we just may have to just... Uh... <laughs> hey there, y'all oh, there she is. for okay. a minutes trying to say goodbye to everyone, but thank y'all for a great night of conversation. And I pray that, um, you know, the words that were spoken tonight, especially about, you know, leaving the past behind, that we, you know, look at that on many, many levels, you know, not rehearsing uh, maybe all of our flaws and, you know, mm-hmm. what we've not been able to do in past times, but try something new. The seasons are changing, the leaves are falling, yeah. they're turning colors. And, you yes. know, you might well go on and take all that black clothes off and put you some colorful, colorful things on and get out and flap your wings and enjoy life <laughs> and just mm-hmm. believe God for the best. So we yes. just thank y'all. Great job, Cheryl. Yes. And uh, we look mm-hmm. forward to coming back again on next week. We're continually praying for Mrs. Uh, t- uh, Mrs. Tracy Hill. Yeah. And the loss of her brother, and going to just mm-hmm. continue to keep lifting them up. This is still very fresh to them. This has just happened on today, so uh, we are uh, keeping her lifted up, and um, we'll just uh, see you guys on next week. So, Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your timeliness, Lord God. We pray that you will wrap your arms around the Hill family, Mrs. Tracy yes. Hill and her family and yes. uh, her brothers, her, her uh, sister-in-law and everybody that's involved with it. And Father, give them the comfort that they need. We pray that tonight provided some form of a distraction for her, you know, to where she could breathe again and get her thoughts and bearings back together. But yes. Father, I pray that you would carry them the rest of the way. And we thank you for it all. If there's anything that we can do, Lord God, keep those things on our hearts and on our minds so we can pay, play a part of this healing process with the family. So until we meet again, we all be blessed. And we'll see you again on next Thursday night. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 September to remember. September to remember. <laughs> y'all next Good week. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Uh-huh.